We need to talk about the Red Bank estate at North Richmond and why there is still no bridge over the Gross River. Why is it taking so long? And after this week's council meeting, why is it going to be delayed even more? Here's what you need to know. First, this has nothing to do with the new bridge at North Richmond. This is a different project. And this goes all the way back to 2008, when the developer, Buildev, then owned by Nathan Tinkler, lodged a DA for the construction of a $15 million home for senior citizens. And some people really, really like that idea. I've heard people refer to this land as the Peel Dairy, but that's not quite right. It was actually a cattle farm called Yubani, and the site is about 450 acres. The plan to subdivide the rest of that land into a $1.2 billion housing estate for 1,400 houses was lodged in 2012. By 2014, Council had approved it and had inked a VPA, or Voluntary Planning Agreement, between Council, the RMS and the developers. That is when the community had a clear expectation of the improvements to local infrastructure and the biggest sweetener was the promised construction of a new bridge over the Gross River to offset the increased traffic and congestion. The VPA set milestones that obliged the developer to plan and then build these improvements uh, by deadlines. Most of the deadlines weren't timed as such, but they were linked to the number of lots registered or sold in the estate. The deadlines fulfilled two purposes. To ensure that the developer contributions would actually accumulate and that the money would be there when it was needed and through the projected sale rate give us a sense of when the whole thing would be done. But I've got to say that the VPA signed when the Liberal Kim Ford was the Mayor had flaws. On the upside it committed the developers to build the bridge regardless of how much it would cost but it left the accumulating millions sitting in the developer's bank account, not with council in trust. And it didn't have safeguards against the community losing out if the consensus among the signatories fell apart. I think it left council in a weak bargaining position. That original VPA said that the DA for the bridge had to be approved by the sale of lot number 341. That approval of the engineering uh, and construction documentation by lot 461 and that the bridge had to be completed by lot 641. Now, true to their word, Red Bank spent $800,000 and lodged their DA for the bridge at the Navua Reserve location in 2015. But ever since, Hawkesbury Council has not helped it faffed about, about whether the DA should be considered under Part 4 or Part 5 of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. And when Mary Lyons Bucket became the Mayor in 2016, she opposed the Navua Reserve location for the bridge. By February 2017, the developers were claiming that the tripartite agreement had stalled and that they wanted out. They took out full page advertisements in the local papers trying to invoke a clause that would allow them to make a $24 million payout and walk away. There were big problems with that. First, no one could say that this is what it would actually cost to build the bridge. What if it cost more? Second, the developers claimed that if the money was paid out, that the RMS would build the bridge instead. But that was not true, and everybody knew it. Only 5% of a payout would come to council. The rest would go to the RMS, who have never, ever said that they would build the bridge. And remember, this was the most significant piece of infrastructure that was used to justify the whole project to the community. And the RMS would just walk away with that money. In those circumstances, council would be crazy to let the developer off the hook. So to keep them on the hook, Council reluctantly voted to extend the deadlines in June 2017. Bridge DA approval was pushed 
out to lot 701 and completion to lot 1001. But hey, if the council's VPA was weak and its bargaining position was weak, what would stop the developer from asking for more delays in the future? Would they do that? Yes. In December 2018, they asked us to amend the deadlines again. And we had to agree because what was the alternative? Another year of foot dragging and then in February 2020, Council finally got around to saying, yeah, that bridge that we wanted over here, the one that you've already spent $800,000 planning, uh, yeah, um, we'd like that somewhere else, please. Could you start over again? The one concession that we got at that point was that Transport for New South Wales agreed to do the property acquisition. However, they've made it clear that they won't lift a finger until there's fi a final plan for the bridge, which at the moment there isn't. And that brings us to this week. This week, Council approved a recommendation to delay the thresholds still further. The developers say that at this time they have 658 lots registered. Under the original VPA, the bridge should have been finished by now. However, here's how the milestones for DA approval and documentation and completion have now been kicked down the road again. Based on current projections, it might be June of 2025 before the bridge opens. Should we make predictions about whether that will happen? The reason I'm really cranky about this is that the community's expectations that infrastructure should accompany development in a competent and timely way have been disappointed over and over. I don't want any further delay, but the weak VPA agreed to in 2014 has tied our hands. We either accept these further delays or we may end up losing the bridge altogether. These agreements should have been tilted in favour of the community and you're entitled to expect that they would be executed consistently and competently. In this case, that hasn't been the case since the beginning.